Hello, all you beautiful pie charmers. This is Early Access Pie Charm with your host, Nafio Islam. Today, I sit down with three people behind our WSL support and ask them some tough questions because a lot of people really want better support for WSL on PyCharm. So let's get into it. Well, we started to support WSL as a remote interpreter via SSH because at the time it was the only way to support it. This, he's one of the people who works on the remote interpreter team which supports WSL in PyCharm along with Vladimir as well as Alex. So users had to run OpenSSH server inside of WSL and to connect to it as they connect to any other remote server. And I believe a couple of years ago, we switched to a new approach. It's so users can now launch WSL processes directly. Uh, under, under the hood, we run uh, WSL.exe and provide the whole path to the Python interpreter and to the script and so on. This is how it works now. So Vladimir, can you just tell me how this all started? Not the WSL part, but also about remote interpreters in general. So it starts even before we all had joined the JetBrains. The oldest commits I've seen were made at 2012, if I'm not mistaken. So I believe it's the time when it started. So is this something that came from the IntelliJ platform or was this something that was made by the PyCharm team itself? No, as far as I'm concerned, it initially it was made especially for PyCharm. And uh, just a few years ago, it was moved to the whole platform. Okay, so something went out of PyCharm and became accepted in other IDEs. So that's pretty cool. This is not something that usually happens here at JetBrains. Usually it's IntelliJ that builds the platform and the features just sort of end up in other IDEs. So the question that I have is when you're using something like WSL or say say Apple comes out with a with a fancy new mechanism for virtualization. We don't know if that's ever going to happen. But essentially, what is preventing us from incorporating or providing native support for something like WSL from the get-go? Well, for, for WSL, we have a couple of problems. The first one, that all IntelliJ products are initially configured to work with local files, even if you have your project on some remote system, you still have to store your files locally and IntelliJ product will copy them to the remote server automatically. And how does this thing happen? There is a special configuration called deployment mm -hmm. and IntelliJ monitors your files and when files are changed, they are copied to the remote server or in some cases, they are copied before you launch your script. So essentially, you have to copy the whole file. You're not uh, changing the files themselves on the server. Like you just do a complete upload. Is that how uh, it works? Yes, yes. Some 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 products do support very limited file editing on the remote uh, servers. As far as I know, PHP Storm supports it. Like you can open one file and edit it. But the whole project should be stored on your local machine and you should use your local ver locally installed version control and so on. I see. Okay, makes sense. But explain explain this to me. You need to copy it back and forth, but so one of the issues that we have with WSL for example is support for virtual environments, right? That does not seem to be limited by copying and pasting files that are being edited inside of the editor. So what is kind of holding us back in terms of giving users that support on virtual machines or WSL or whatever? It's more like a historical problem. I had a very d different approach used yeah, for uh, virtual environments and different interpreter types. But now we are trying to unify all these things together. And when we'll finish this job, we should have like unique API, which will give us ability to create virtual environment on any interpreter type, be it WSL or SSH or whatever. Yeah, actually, Elias said uh, 
exactly what our plan plans are as for now. There is a quite a lot of differences between local execution and local file system and uh, local file system actions and working with files and executing files on the remote machines. So basically now we have two different implementations for almost each feature. Like we have some extension points that are implemented differently for local machine and for SSH machines. So this, I think this holds us back for some features that we are not exposing to users for remote de development, like creating virtual ends. But general, that the plan is that we are going to provide the API that uh, allows us to use one base code for each of the feature we provide and let this feature run on local machine as well on SSH and even on uh, Docker or some AWS instances or, and so on. Yeah. So essentially what you're saying is the reason we haven't solved this problem is because we want to solve this problem, not just for WSL, but for problems like WSL in the future as well. So that different kinds of machines, virtual, remote, whatever it is, can be supported with a minimum level of effort instead of having to build everything from scratch over and over again. Am I correct in understanding that? Yeah, it's quite correct. Correct. So how difficult is this? As we already have a lot of source code that different type of targets that we have, like local machine, uh, SSH, Docker, we need to bring all this together and get the single code for each of these features and hide the differences of these targets under the API implementation. So, so what you're telling me is you have to change a lot of existing code, make sure that that doesn't break, unify all of that into a framework, and then support all the stuff we already support, and then you can add WSL. I mean, then we will have some WSL features that we don't have now, because now we have a WSL support for project execution. Yes, yes, absolutely. But essentially what I'm saying is, a lot of the features that we have right now will probably need to be re-implemented in order for everything to work, and that will probably need to be tested. Is that what you're telling me? Like the mother of all refactorings? Yeah, something like that. We did a lot of refactorings, for example, for SSH subsystem. I started it some time ago, I think three years ago, and then Vladimir came to our company. Joined you up. basically made him do all the hard work. Is that what you're saying? Uh, yeah, he made the next iteration, actually, of, of the refactoring. So, yeah, we've got a lot of refactoring tasks because we face uh, new new problems and sometimes it requires complete, or not complete, but uh, general rewrite of the code. Yeah. Okay. that's That seems like a lot of work. So th the question that I have is, once this target API is done, does that mean whenever somebody comes out with a new cloud, with a new way of doing things, with a new API, say for IBM cloud or for XYZ cloud or whatever, it will be far easier for them also to implement functionality within PyCharm. Phobic. Yes, I believe that the whole idea of target API is to generalize infrastructure for running process or synchronized files from some high level things like virtual environments, like Python interpreters and so on. So yes, we want to make a, a simple API that uh, would allow various cloud uh, companies like IBM Cloud, like Amazon, and so on, so on, just to implement implement some interface about running some abstract process, uh, about synchronizing files between machines, and uh, we'll keep all the things about virtual ends and so on away from that API. I see. Well, thank you very much, Vova, Ilya, and Alexander. Thank you for answering some very tough questions, and I hope to book you again soon. And bye. 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 And thank you for listening. 
If you want more of these podcasts, let us know on Twitter.